Are you looking for the best zero drop running shoes of 2024? In this video we will look at some of the 4 best running shoes on the market. Before we get started with our video. We have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Starting at number 1. Ultra Olympus. Kelsey CRR, a midfoot striker who does some off-road racing but typically runs about 25 miles a week for her own enjoyment, is one of the runners who's found success with the original Ultra foot shape. But after years of wearing the Ultra Lone Peak, with its comparatively low stack height, she was curious to see how the Olympus's higher stack height paired with her running routine. Turns out she loves the extra 8mm of cushion of the Ultra Olympus. The added support and bounce made it hard to return to the Lone Peaks, although she noted that there was a definite trade-off with ground feel. While CRR described these shoes as lightweight, she did note that the Olympus is stiffer than the Lone Peak, with the shoe rubbing her right foot near the ankle bone, especially when the shoe was new. One area where this shoe excelled compared to the Ultra Lone Peaks, and trail runners more generally, is in traction. I took the Ultra Olympus on many trail runs with 1,000 feet of vert, switchbacks, packed down snow, and mud, CRR said. I never felt slippy or fearful of losing footage at all. Crampons were just a bonus but not a must in these shoes in snowy trail conditions. She noted that the tread on the bottom of the shoe still looked great after a month of running on both roads and trails. Despite having a history of runner's knee and a torn meniscus on her left side, CRR noted no knee issues with the Ultra Olympus. However, she reported that the looser fit around the midfoot could mean individuals with weak ankles may be more prone to rolling them. At Number 2. Zero Scrambler Low. Dustin Adair, who clocks in upwards of 40 miles of trail running a week, was once a committed ultra fan. I was married to Lone Peaks for a long time but over the last few years they've made some changes and the shoe just doesn't fit the same, he told me. I've made many trips to the running shoe store, tried on many different kinds of shoes, in hopes of finding the golden shoe again. This sentiment reflects a broader shift in ultra shoes, as the brand has incrementally trimmed down the wide fit of their shoes over the years, leaving the original fan base in a lurch. This tester wasn't interested in going maximal, hate the hoka, but what about trying out a barefoot style shoe? If the ultra lone peaks have the lowest stack height, 25 mm, of a more traditional running shoe, the zero scrambler low has one of the higher stack heights, 19 mm, of barefoot style shoes. It's also the brand whose fit mostly closely resembles that of the original Ultras. Could this be the Ultra Lone Peak alternative my tester was looking for? These Zero shoes are now the closest I've come to the Lone Peak, he reported. I love the way these shoes fit my feet. Like the Lone Peaks, the Zero Scrambler Low is lightweight, breathable, and very stable. While he did notice the ground with the Zero Scrambler Low as compared to the Ultra Lone Peak, he found this to be an improvement on the original shoe. Even when clocking 10 miles and 2,000 feet of vertical gain on trails that were a mix of dirt and rock, the balance of ground feel and cushion was on point. If my tester had any criticism, it's that he wanted to see a Velcro strip on the heel to match the gator clip on the front of the shoes. At Number 3. Topo Magnafly 5. Another brand that holds its own in the zero-drop space is Topo. While not all of Topo's shoes are zero-drop, many of them are low-drop, they are also one of the few brands that lets you drill down by drop on their website, so kudos for that, which offers some flexibility for individuals who don't mind a couple of millimeters at the heel. Katie Hill tried out the Topo Magnafly to see how it would compare to her typical Ultra Timps or Escalantes. She switched to zero-drop running shoes a couple of years ago to help in creating a natural gait to reduce the risk of injury in the long term. Most recently, Katie has been dealing with some IT band syndrome in her right knee. After 50 miles of testing on roads and trails in the early summer heat of Austin, Texas, there were aspects of this shoe she appreciated, and others she did not. The pronounced arch support, a major difference between ultras and topos, felt lovely on my midfoot. The amount of foam in the shoe offered a nice balance between cushion and ground feel. She also noted that the tread is a little wider through the midfoot and the heel than on an Ultra, where the tread really tapers with the foot shape, which helped make the shoe feel more stable overall. The extra tread also made this a good choice for those days when her runs took her between pavement and city trails. Finally, the durability of this shoe showed a lot of promise. After 50 miles of running, the outsole still looked great and was holding its tread well. The upper looked virtually new. 
Katie reported that as someone with a wide foot, she was able to wear the Magnafly, which isn't yet offered in wide, but wishes that the toe box had been a bit wider. The comparative lack of the room and the toe box somewhat contributed to the development of blisters during the unusually sweaty weeks she spent testing this shoe. At Number 4. Innov 8 Trailfly G270. While zero drops are most often found in running shoes with other natural movement features, no arch support, a wide toe box, no rocker bottom or toe spring, the Innov 8 Trailfly G270 is a fairly traditional running shoe. This one has plenty of arch support. A pretty standard toe box. It even has a toe spring on an outsole that is veering into rocker bottom territory. OL contributor Katie Hill tested the Innov 8 Trailfly G270 while recovering from IT band syndrome on her right side. She typically runs muddy creek trails in Texas and Ultra Escalantes or Lone Peaks, standard shoes for runners who prefer natural movement features, and noted right away that the toe box on the Trailfly G270 was noticeably narrower. Fortunately, the width elsewhere was comfortable and the interior volume of the shoe was surprisingly roomy. One thing that stood out to Katie was how much more structure and stability the Trayfly G270 has compared to her typical zero-drop shoes of choice. Katie was impressed, too, with the shoe's traction on muddy and slippery surfaces. Even after crossing calf-deep creeks and running through muddy bogs, there was little compromise to the shoe's grip on rocks and rooty trails in the miles that followed, she said. The creek crossing was full of slippery rock snot, but the shoe stayed pretty stable underwater. Because of the narrow structure of the outsole, it felt at times as if her heel were hanging over the side of the shoe. While she did not roll her ankle in even the slippery conditions previously described, she did report some additional fatigue with the stability muscles in her ankles and along her Achilles, 